Hello and welcome to another Stogie Review video review. I am Walt White here with another first impressions review. This time around I'm doing the Pinar del Rio Small Batch Reserve Maduro. Now this is a Robusto format. I think it's a 52 by 5 and this particular cigar is available with two wrappers. There's a Maduro and a Habano. And if you look closely at the wrapper it's kind of striking or it, it I shouldn't say it's really striking. It's it looks very, very familiar. Uh, the first time I laid eyes on this, I thought, wow, you know, that looks a lot like, you know, the, the Partagas Serie D number four band. And I don't know whether it's just sort of the, the new trend or, or it's just coincidental, but I, I'm beginning to see more and more bands that mimic older Cuban cigar brands. Uh, for instance, I, I was given a bunch of these Curivari cigars uh, in, in various lines, and many of them had bands that were very reminiscent of old Cuban cigars. So when I saw this, I thought, immediately I thought of that Curivari line and, and, and the similarities between it and a variety of other Cuban cigars, or not other Cuban cigars. Curivari isn't Cuban to begin with, but um, I got that same impression when I looked at this. I thought, wow, you know, that's very Partiga Siri D ish, but. We'll see how it smokes. Um, if you remember a while back, there were there were some stories going around on the web that Abe Abe Flores of Pinar del Rio had picked up from the Don Leoncio factory in the Dominican Republic and moved the entire production elsewhere. Um, cigars were re were tweaked a little bit and production ramped up once again. Um, around this time, I remember seeing a lot of the, the Pinar del Rio stuff being closed out on Cigars International. Um, you know, some of the, uh, like the, the sun, was it Sun Grown Habano blends, uh, just the, and the Oscuro, were going for practically half of what they cost in the stores. And after those cigars had kind of dried up, new cigars were rolled out. So uh, there was a transition at some point, and when, from what I understand, this cigar was sort of birthed in that new factory, and that's kind of where it picked up production for the first time. So I've, I've always liked Abe's stuff. Uh, he does a variety of cigars that I've, I've enjoyed quite a bit. He makes one for a friend of mine, Jim Cronin, down uh, in Skip Pack, Pennsylvania, for Top Shelf Cigars. And it's, a, it's a really nice, mild Connecticut cigar. And there, there are just a lot of different cigars in the Pinar del Rio lineup that I'm happy with. Uh, all of them tend to have burn problems. I shouldn't say all of them. More, more often than not, I tend to have burn issues with Pinar del Rio cigars, mostly uh, almost like fireproof problems where I, I struggle to keep the cigars lit. But I'm really eager to get this one started, so let's kind of cut to the chase and get cut and lit and get this thing smoking. So uh, initial impression, just kind of looking over it, it looks beautiful. It's got a nice oily brown wrapper. It's got a nice sheen to it. The cap looks very neatly applied. It looks like it's a triple cap times two. It looks like there may be an extra cap in there, but th that's fine. It's actually, it wouldn't be a triple cap times two, It'd be, what, quadruple cap? But it, at any rate, it looks really good got a little bit of a, a texture to it, kind of like uh, high grit sandpaper. Doesn't have much of an aroma, but it's it's impressive to start. And as much flack as I'll I'll give the cigar for having a band that looks like an old Cuban band, it does look good on the cigar. The nice white bright band pops really well against the dark oily wrapper so it looks good but I'm still gonna give it some flack for for mimicking the the Siri D number four band the pre-light draw is, is really really loose it's got sort of a barnyard kind of a pre-light flavor kind of reminds me of hay But all in all, it's off to a really good start. So let's go. So at any rate, how did I get these cigars? Well, it's worth noting that I got these for free. Uh, I got an email from Abe before my accident. Uh, it was probably a month and a half ago, uh, asking for my address to send me some samples. Uh, it, it had been a while since I talked to Abe, so I was really surprised to get the email. I was really happy to get it as well. Um, I, I like a lot of Abe's stuff, and I love when he bounces new stuff off of me new blends and such. 
So I sent him my information. He sent me some cigars. He sent me uh, two of these, two of the Habano, and some new stuff that he's got coming out. At this point, I don't know whether they're out yet or if they will be out shortly. But I believe it's another small batch kind of a thing. He also sent me a sampler of his older stuff, mostly the 1875 and, you know, some of that kind of stuff. I think it's the 1875. But anyway, it comes in like a box of six and there's one of each different cigar. I love those samplers. It's it's a fantastic variety. The format is good. They're all Robustos. I just, I, I love those samplers. I don't know if you can buy them just kind of anywhere or, or what the case is, but I really like those things. Ooh, a lot of power up front. Lots of spice. Aggressive on the throat. Really aggressive through the sinus. Ooh. Really peppery, really spicy through the sinus. It's got sort of a charred kind of a flavor profile across the palate. Producing lots of smoke that's coating the palate well. Gets through the sinus really nice. And it, it's burning well. So we're off to a really good start. So sit back, enjoy the cigar that you're probably smoking while you watch me smoke a cigar. And I'll be back in just a second. We'll take another look at the Pinar del Rio Small Batch Reserve Maduro. It has been about 40 minutes since I turned the camera off the first time, and I've got to say I'm really impressed with the way the cigar is burning. Uh, in the past, I've struggled with a lot of Pinar del Rio product in the burn department. It's, it's not that these, the cigars burn unevenly or really crooked and require a lot of touch-ups. It's just that I just can't keep the things lit, and sometimes it can be, it can be very frustrating. And this cigar has been absolutely trouble-free. I'm just completely amazed by that. Uh, there was one minor touch-up that, that I needed to do, and that was just because it was it was burning a little unevenly. There was a, a piece of wrapper that's, that looked like it was pulling away a little bit, and as a result, that portion of the cigar didn't burn properly. I just hit it really quick with a, with a torch. It solved the problem right away, and I haven't had to touch the lighter since. I'm just... I'm, I'm amazed by the, by the way the cigar is burning. Smoke volume is excellent. I'm getting lots of dense smoke. It coats the palate well. It's easy to get through the sinus. The really overwhelming pepper spice flavors that I was getting early on, uh, it was kind of like a punch in the nose, it has settled down quite a bit. There's still some definite pepper and spice mixed in with the flavor profile, but it's not nearly as overwhelming as it was earlier on in the, in the cigar. The flavor profile is kind of interesting. I'm getting a little bit of a, a woody flavor. I'm getting some of that, that barnyard flavor, or barnyard aroma, kind of like the smells that you smell when you walk up to like a farmhouse or something where you know where there are horses and stuff you get that grassy sort of smell you get that 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 hay sort of smell uh, not really i'm not getting any of the manure smell in here but you know those those barnyard-esque sort of flavors or aromas are coming through and i'm really enjoying them uh, there's also a little bit of a cocoa flavor that's sort of mixed in it's very random uh, it's not a consistent flavor it sort of pokes its head in here and there and all in all it's making for a nice rounded cigar with good body and good flavor with uh, it's just got a nice good balance of, of everything and so far I'm really impressed with it I'm, I'm liking it much more than I thought I would not saying that I was expecting a, a poor cigar just I was ex I was going into this expecting to grab my to be grabbing my lighter a lot and eliminating that that hassle of reaching for the lighter has allowed me to spend a little bit more time thinking about the cigar and the flavors that I'm getting out of it and it's just made for a much more enjoyable experience. It's been about 15 minutes since I turned the camera off the last time and I think I may have, may have spoken a little too soon. I'm running into some minor burn issues now. And it didn't really kick in until after I pulled the band off, so we're getting really late into the cigar at this point. And it's not as troublesome as if these burn issues were, were starting earlier on and were a consistent problem throughout. But I'm getting some flaking of the ash. That's been kind of common throughout the whole thing. Uh, it's just being a little more flaky at this point. And I've had to touch it up maybe two or three times since I turned the camera off last. I've got a funky sort of opposing burn 
at, you know, opposite of what's what's common. Generally, as you're smoking a cigar, if it's burning properly, it has a nice cone shape where everything is sort of burning evenly. The, the filler is burning just a little bit slower than the wrapper and the binder. But in this case, I've got sort of the opposite effect going on where inside the cigar, the filler is burning a little bit faster than the binder and the wrapper. And that's kind of where I think the touch-ups are required. Uh, the cigar is not really staying lit. It's taking some more effort to keep the cigar burning properly. But the occasional touch-up is is producing lots of smoke and the cigar is, is performing well in the smokeability sense. Uh, good flavor, lots of dense smoke. It doesn't taste as though something is not burning properly. Some cigars, when you start getting burn, burn issues with them, the flavor is just off. Something doesn't taste quite right. But here, even though I've got this dished sort of burn going on, I'm still getting a nice even flavor profile. It doesn't feel like something is missing because something isn't burning properly. So all in all, good solid cigar. I'm not quite sure what the price point is or what the availability is. I know that since these are a small batch cigars, you're probably going to pay a premium for them. However, I don't know what that premium is, and I don't know if these are going to be showing up in the catalogs or if this is an exclusively uh, brick and mortar kind of a thing where you have to go to your local cigar shop to get them. Um, even if it is a brick and mortar cigar, that doesn't mean you're not going to be able to purchase them online. A lot of the smaller brick and mortar shops have uh, online retail outlets set up where you can order cigars and either by phone or over the web in an e-commerce setting. But I'm not quite sure whether or not these are going to be on the big catalog sites. You know, with a name like Small Batch Reserve, I would hope that they would not be available at these big online retail outlets. Um, you know, it does add to the exclusivity. It probably will raise the price a bit, but you know, I like I like those cigars that I have to go into a cigar shop to buy. I don't always like paying for them, but I like knowing that, you know, I'm getting something a little more exclusive than, you know, just a run of the mill cigar from Cigars International or Famous or, or whomever you're buying from. So, you know, depending on the price or depending on the price, I would say this is well worth picking up. If it's in the six to eight dollar range, I think it's a, it's a killer cigar, and you should definitely go out to a local cigar shop and pick it up. If it's running between eight and ten dollars, it's not. I don't think it's as good as a as good a value. However, I still think it's a good solid cigar for ten dollars and up. I don't know that I'd be reaching for these all that that often because at that point now you're competing with you know some of the bigger names bigger cigars you know a lot of the illusion product is between eight and ten dollars you know ashton product is up over ten dollars and and now you're competing with other cigars that i think offer more bang for the buck at that price point so i'm just speculating what this cigar is is being priced at you know msrp I, I really have no idea i haven't researched it you know being a first impressions review i think i'm allowed to slack just a little bit and focus on the cigar itself and not so much the availability or pricing or where I can find it, things like that. So all in all, good solid cigar, well worth giving a try, you know, if, if the price is comfortable for you. And that's gonna do it for the review. So thanks for watching another Stogie Review video cigar review. Happy smoking and I will catch you later.